So there is definitely a difference. <laughs> There's definitely a difference between disassociation or even NPC uh, and spiritual awakening. So, for those who haven't really heard the language spoken by non-duality or uh, other forms of spiritual, uh, methods of spiritual awakening, um, talking about being the observer can seem like what is being pointed at or what is being suggested is to just do nothing, be nothing, and just be numb to the world, which is certainly not what is being spoken. In fact, it's quite the opposite, that when you become fully aware of everything, you're not being numb to it, but the things that jump out at you, you realize, for the most part, are completely unimportant and have no value to your life. Now, how most people live their life is they feel like they have to analyze and, and, and be objective about everything. They feel like that they have to analyze and have some opinion about everything. And most people feel like that's what makes them smart. That's what makes them knowledgeable and then they are able to say, I'm a smart person because I think for myself. But this whole analyzation, this whole analyzation is not thinking for yourself. This compare and contrast is not thinking for yourself. It is you following a program in your mind that was taught to you by someone else. Even if you rejected some program and and adopted a new program and you think I'm I'm thinking for myself because I'm not doing what my parents did I'm doing what you know Dave Ramsey says or I'm doing what so and so says then you just adopted a new program you're still not thinking for yourself you're still not uh, in the flow you're still lost in a programmed mind. And I'm not judging you for that. I, I did the same thing. I'm just merely expressing what it is I'm driving at. And that is this. That when you have a spiritual awakening and your consciousness shifts from the mind into the heart space, then there's not all this chatter in the mind. And if it is, you don't care anything about it. It becomes so irrelevant to you. So as you are driving down the road and you see, you know, Chinese food right here, either something resonates within your own beingness, whether that's something for you or not, the marketing will have no uh, control over you anymore. None of that, none of that matters. So when we look at disassociation is when usually because of some form of trauma, either a, a, an event of trauma or long-term trauma, what happens is people recess to some dark place in their mind where, ev where everything is just numb. And they are also not bothered by the marketing of Chinese food or whatever it might be. But it's a different thing because they are not fully aware and alive living through their pure consciousness. They are still stuck in the mind in this tiny little prison cell that won't even come out of the prison cell because it, they're tired of their own mind. They're tired of the world around them or, or, or they've been traumatized. So this is not nothing... 
about how I feel right now is I am disassociated. It's just that it just doesn't matter. And what matters comes through my heart. And so therefore the action comes through my heart. So if I'm driving along here and I witness a wreck, uh, some people saying, you know, that, that I am teaching people to be uh, NPC. But I don't know how an NPC person would necessarily act per se, other than the the jokes about it that I see on YouTube or whatever. But if I'm driving along and I see an accident, in my full awareness, I am pulling over out of my own heart space to assist any way that I can in that in that accident. So What I infer that people mean by NPC is that NPC, either one, wouldn't even notice the accident. They would just keep driving by. Or even if they noticed the accident, they just wouldn't. There would be no, no uh, action within their heart to, to help someone. And sometimes you see an accident and you already see 20 people helping and you do just drive on because you're living through your heart space. It's not a rule that the mind says you better stop or you're not a good person or whatever that case may be. And I feel like that if we're talking about disassociation, same thing. You're just so disassociated you might not even be aware that there's an accident. It's a completely different thing. It's on opposite ends of the spectrum. One is where you are forced into some dark uh, prison in your own mind where, where you're just blocking everything out. But in Spiritual Awakening, you're not blocking anything. I'm not blocking the advertisement of Chinese food. I'm not blocking it. I am, I am aware of it. But I become transparent so that I become aware of it and it goes right through me. And, but also, let me add this. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with disassociation either. Because sometimes that's what people need. And that's what they feel. And the, uh, the last thing they need is for me to be saying that they're not in a good place. Because I'm not saying that. Um... I'm just saying that the two are different. And also the whole NPC um, stuff that I see on YouTube. Where maybe you see like a homeless person in a parking lot who, you know, is uh, drugged out or something. And somebody's making fun of them because they don't have any awareness or, or whatever. Um... But even that I'm not saying is wrong or bad because that's just the place that that person is in and uh, us judging people for being in that place does not help them. It does not help us. It creates a problem within our own mind. So all of that to just say that... Um, NPC or disassociation or derealization or any of these things is not the same thing. And I understand that sometimes people see my videos and they comment and say they don't understand what being the observer is. And I get that. Because I probably would not have understood what being the observer is either 20 years ago. It would have made no sense to me. Because I would have thought I am the observer. I observe with my five senses. Until you realize that there's more than five senses. Until you realize that there is there is also the heart sense or the heart space or the higher consciousness that is aware of things that the eyes can never be aware of, that the ears can never hear. And in that full awareness, you feel and sense and see the entire universe. 
You're not blocking anything out. In fact, because you're not blocking anything out, you become ultra aware. But that ultra awareness is not something, because I know someone may, may think, ultra aware, I don't want that. I already am aware of too much stuff. It's, but it's different because that ultra awareness, that ultra awareness is unattached. Even if you rescue someone that's in a car wreck, you are unattached to any of that. Or if you have a completely boring day, you're unattached to that boredom. Because in reality, you don't feel bored. Only It's only the mind that creates an image within you that says you're bored. Only the mind can do that. So ultimately, it's just about staying as the observer, not being inactive, not being numb. But when you look up the definition of NPC on the Urban Dictionary, it says something like people who can't think objectively for yourself. But what I want to say on that is this. That whatever people think that they are thinking objectively about is just a filter or a program in their mind. That's all it is. They're not thinking for themselves. They're still using somebody else's mind. You know, it's like if your dad tells you, uh, the only good purpose for a woman is in the bedroom and in the kitchen. Okay, something I heard when I was growing up. Then, if you are single looking for, uh, if you're if you're single looking for, if you're single looking for a wife, and you are thinking objectively about that, then you're looking for a woman who knows her place, right? But that's not reality. You're, you're still not thinking for yourself. Because there's really no need for us to think for ourselves as much as when we open up these floodgates of our own consciousness, everything just flows through us. And it feels so good to see what is moving through us. No one has to make a decision and say, mm, I don't know if I like all this happiness. Let me, let me contemplate that. Or everything's falling into place. Mm, I don't know about that. I feel like I'm out of control here. People don't do that. Instead, this is what people do. They claim that they're thinking objectively for themselves, and they find themselves in one problem right after another. And you would feel like at some point in time, somebody would say, this right here is not working. It's not doing it for me. What else is there? It's, it's why we surrender to God or the universe or whatever you want to call it. Not some preconceived idea of God. Because when we do that, all we do is surrender to a bunch of rules and images in our mind that tell us we have to walk a certain way, dress a certain way, talk, uh, have sex a certain way, all this, this, and this. And all of that's also bullshit. It's just flowing, flowing. And a lot of people on my videos get it. They get it. And a lot of people don't get it. It's okay if you don't get it. It doesn't make you wrong or bad. It doesn't make you my enemy if you don't get it. But if you want, if you don't get it and you want to get it, then I want to help you get it. If you don't get it and you don't want to get it, that's fine too. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just flowing. Not trying to convince or convert anyone into anything whatsoever just floating through time and space nothing to do nothing to be observing watching 
witnessing not just the world outside, but even the world inside that we call our mind and its thoughts. Even all that is witnessed. So, the mind sees $3.77 for gas. And it's a, and then it goes off on a rant. Right? It goes off on a rant about gas prices. Okay. Thinking objectively for yourself. All right. Where is that getting you? Is that changing the gas prices? No. No matter how many times you post on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Reddit, whatever, it's not going to change the gas prices. Now, if there's a place in your town where gas is 377 and another place where it's 425, you don't even have to think objectively about that because very naturally in the flow of the universe, you're going to go to what gas station is the one you need to go to. So hope all this makes sense. Um, I appreciate everybody's comments. Uh, and I appreciate everyone, even if they're being sarcastic. I, I love it when somebody says, this is just, um, this is just teaching us how to be NPC. I, I love that people say comments like that because it shows me how the mind is receiving the information that I am putting out there. Or when people say that you're just teaching people to disassociate. I, I love those comments. I love what the so-called negative comments as much as I enjoy the, the, the positive comments because they both uh, uh, show me how people are receiving the information and someone even commented being sarcastically being sarcastic I hope that I just observed someone drowning inferring that just be the observer just watch things happen and that is so far from anything that I am saying at all it's so far from anything that I'm saying you should never just watch somebody get hurt. You should never just watch someone take your money or rob your house or hurt your kids or, of course not. Being the observer means not adding this huge story to everything, such as gas prices, such as politics, even war. Because either you can do something about it, then do it or you can't, then let it go. Um, it is recognizing the programs in the mind as you walk through the store that tell you, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, and then you spent $500 and now you can't pay your rent. It's observing as these things unfold. It's the same thing that Eckhart Tolle is talking about, power of now, being in the now. or untethered soul or the things that Ramana Maharshi talk about or Nisargadatta Maharaj on and on and on and on it's the same thing uh, it is to let go to be free from the mind and all of its intrusive thoughts pulling you into the mess that is not yours but you get pulled into it for so long and so deep that you claim it as your own but it's not you can let all that go just be the observer watch and watch how something moves through you to save the drowning person to save someone in a car accident to buy the products that you are meant to buy to, to leave alone the ones you're not to find the perfect relationship, all as being the observer, without saying, I'm looking for this type of person because this is what I've been programmed to look for. And your whole life's gonna unfold beautifully. What?
Namaste.